Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're here to talk about the end of Evangelion. And as always, I have here the pilot of Ava, Zero, Ramon. What's up, guys? <laughs> and the pilot of Ava Unit, One, Ro. <laughs> Oh, why am I one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man, Carlos, uh, Car Carlos clearly wants to be the redhead. That's all. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, if anybody here, you know, listening to this episode loves Evangelion as much as I do, uh, you know, you want to hear some guys just talk about their most recent experience watching this movie, stick around. But if you also want to watch a guy slowly possibly go into madness and have a full breakdown say because that's more than likely going to happen to me <laughs> uh so that's a little dramatic oh dude i <laughs> I, I mean this i agree so seriously <laughs> i'm like don't judge us don't judge one of us might cry or just not stop talking like it's okay well, well, let's start with the person that's least likely to get me there to have a mental breakdown. Ramon, you, you tell what? us what you thought about the, <laughs> about the movie. <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. man. What did I come in the middle to see, guys? When mommy and daddy fight. No, I'm kidding. No, I mean. You are yeah. in the middle, at least on my screen. <laughs> in my screen, too. And talk about mommy and daddy. I mean, this is a show that's all about, like, pleasing your daddy, right? Damn. No. I <laughs> This, oh, this, that's this, not weird. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> that daddy issues, man. It's like you know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, so new Evangelion in its entirety. I think it's been one of my favorite. Like anything that's considered anime. I think when I first started re-venturing into anime as an adult, like maybe like six, seven years ago, like whenever that was. Um, I think this is one of the first ones you told me, Carlos. And obviously, I was more than happy to like finally watch it in its entirety because i think i tried catching it at one point or another but now that i know that it was like a season like two movies and then four <laughs> other movies i realized why i was so confused as to what anything was about or anything that was happening and anyways long story short i love every reiteration of it um but talking about the end of Evangelion particularly i mean it was the ending that i kind of wanted after watching the first uh like season or the actual show um, because even though I love the ending of the show, this is kind of a little bit more like you get more closure out of this. So yeah. for that reason, I'm totally finally ready to talk about it. And, and it's crazy that when the show ended like this, there wasn't like a, hey, we're going to make a movie to really explain it. Like this came after people complained at the what did I just watch on the last two episodes? So, you know, I'm kind of glad that that negative reaction was part of it. But, bro, uh, you were there next to us. You know, how much did you enjoy this movie on, on your watch? Um, so it's, it's so I, I didn't watch uh, the, the show growing up. I, I think I saw it when I started watching anime again, probably during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so, so I kind of, I came into it kind of old, um, and I, I did uh, watch this movie, and I definitely, I'm glad that this movie existed, because the the I had the same reaction to the ending of the show. I was like, "What the heck just happened?" But 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 then after I saw this movie like on, on yeah. like streaming before, so so watching it again, I forgot a, a lot of the things that is is so different about this anime. Um, so it, it was, it, in some ways, it was a nice refresher. It, it reminded me a lot of kind of like what it symbolizes and stuff like that. So, so it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting show and anime. And I think it's very worth watching for almost anyone. And I, I, I think, I think they could have a, like a whole class on this one show just because it has so many things. Oh, dude, definitely. If I was writing yeah. a paper like this could be something I could talk about and write paragraphs and paragraphs and pages and pages mm -hmm. i mean and i wouldn't say it's like just for everybody like i think i'm really careful about who i recommend this to um mm -hmm. or at least what part of it right because there's been people mm -hmm. that i'm like hey watch evangelion like the the four movies at the end and if i had more time to look at all the, the actual names i would tell you exactly which ones you should look at if you don't feel like you want to watch like uh, 26 episodes of like depression inducing, like yeah. <laughs> whiny baby crying and, and all this stuff. But like, I don't know, like, and then for those people that can dig deep into like their emotions and, and think about like the overall point of Evangelion and this kind of humanity at its core, like, I think, yeah, like watching the, the first series and then watching these movies, like, I don't know, it's just all of it is so good. But like I'm saying, not all people per like love the season, like this, like the, the show. Um, but yeah. I feel like more people like like the movies later on. 
But then again, if you really dig deep and you love that depressing hardcore like topics, then the show's for you. Because oh boy, <laughs> like no, no man, that, yeah. definitely like this. This show has had such a cultural impact, you know, ever since it kind of like released, and you know, you kind of see its influence on other things. Um, you know, I know you guys kind of watch this, you know, kind of a little bit after your thirties, but you only imagine like somebody like myself and a lot of people that, you know, watch this when they were probably like 10, 11 years old. And you're kind of like, you know, you don't really understand some mm-hmm. of the d- deep meaning. You're more there like being like, Oh man, like these characters are great. Like Ray's great. Oscar's great. You know, they pilot these things and you're kind of understand certain things are happening, but not really. It's like, you know, like Power Rangers. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, it's just kind of crazy because the more I watch it as a, as a grown up, person like the more i can appreciate it the more i learn more about the creator the more the more i learn about just how like depressing it is and i don't know man it's just a i don't know if for you guys once you guys were done with the movie it's kind of like you took the same meaning as like when we watched godzilla uh the recent one it's like you know is this movie trying to tell you that all you gotta do is like live <laughs> like live live your life don't give up nope that's not I the meaning i want to live <laughs> no Sin- sinji never had that attitude right there like that yeah. uh... It's the reason why when I talk about this show and movie and everything, my hand gestures are always very violent and aggressive. Um, <laughs> it's because, like, I don't know. I, I think that's part of the the ride for this is that some of the characters that are in Evangelion just end up being really, like, memorable. I think just throughout, like, you mentioned Asuka, like, before I saw her, like, before exactly who I knew who she was. And then especially once we got her tattooed, I just remember being like, dude, I need to find out more about this girl that Carlos is like tattooing on her arm. <laughs> and then it's like, you know, going and digging deep into not only like Asuka, but then, you know, even characters like Misato, which, you know, whenever, when I watched it for the first time, talk to you, Carlos, and you're like, man, yeah, you're right. Like I hadn't even thought about Misato in that way because you watched it when you were younger. And then for me, it was like, damn, Misato was like, it hit, she hit me hard. Like she's the one that kind of held my hand throughout the whole show. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. like, dude, to commemorate, my girl yeah oh, uh, <laughs> she, she gave me cross. this she gave me this <laughs> she gave me this right before sinji did nothing <laughs> Dude, that's awesome i'm a little i'm a little jealous right now so the whole I mean, show <laughs> yeah the whole show but it specifically in this movie that we just watched yeah. uh, I th- can i be honest that's what i hated about watching this movie again like in theaters is that we had to start with the most pathetic scenes of like sinji <laughs> Oh, well, I was going to ask you guys something about that, that <laughs> intro scene. And I kind of joked about it, like, as soon as, you know, before oh you guys even... Oh, my God, an intro scene? Yeah, because you guys, I guess, oh, hardly so had forgotten scene. about it. So I kind of joked about it. But uh, I was going to ask uh, you... All like, the spoilers hey, are coming. <laughs> well, that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah. Uh, okay, so for the director to put that shot, man, that's like, you're almost that like, you're crazy. What, what do you think he's trying to say? Is this kind of like him commenting on the fact that, like, hey, I know people love my show. I know what you guys are kind of like doing to these like characters are like 14 year old in the, in the animated neon Genesis Evangelion. Is he kind of like bringing that we're like the, the people, the audience is kind of like, they're doing this to his characters. It's just like a commentary. I feel like it's a commentary. Like why else would you do this craziest shot? Like I've never seen this be done in like cinema. So it's just like, to me, just seeing it in like a movie screen theater with, full of people it just i don't know it blew my mind <laughs> I, I don't i i think it definitely plays into wanting you to be the voyeur right it wants you to be there with sinji during the act and i think what makes it like at least makes more sense is why it would be in there it's because that i think that it brings a lot more because like again i despise sinji and i'm not the only <laughs> one and i feel like taking that this kind of scene seeing it and being like that's a disgusting human, right? Like, I, there's nothing even, like, remotely cute about the situation. So then I think once you get to the end of Evangelion, for real, and he has this big freaking moment of, like, realization and him going through why he wants to continue living, like, I think that's what it is. It's supposed to really make you reflect on all the crappy stuff that he's done or h- things that he hasn't done and how much of a coward he's been and make you just kind of feel the same guilt. And then at the end, you're kind of like, dude, guy, you should not that you don't deserve to be alive <laughs> and it's just so crazy that he's the catalyst for like you know like everything that happens to the end and i don't know man i think it's just it, it's the range of his character <laughs> you have like <laughs> jesus christ and then you have like pathetic <laughs> sorry yeah, oh you got it was the no, noise disgusting <laughs> no no d- dude uh so so after this movie i i, I started the show from the beginning 
Oh, nice. And I, I, I forgot, I, I forgot about something that it kind of hit me, um, and and it kind of put the movie more in perspective. Like in the beginning of the show, Shinji wasn't even there. Uh, his dad brought him over, and yep. didn't even tell him that he was going to be pilot, uh, piloting in uh, in Ava. So he he just kind of got thrown into this. And as soon as he got thrown into this, like these pilots feel everything that's happening to the Ava. So, so like piloting an Ava is torture. So, yep. so like it kind of put something in perspective that like all besides the fact that uh, he obviously has daddy issues, like all of this is the dad's fault. Like, oh, like yeah. th- th- this kid, he's a kid and he's been tortured. He, he's been neglected and he's been everything. And then, he, then he's brought back and he's tortured. It's still neglected and, and, and all that stuff. And, and he, he's, he's just a broken person. He's a completely broken person and he's in this spot that like he doesn't know how to express affection. He doesn't know how to express any feelings besides freaking out. So it's all like unhealthy, like messed up things. So so then when he he's there, it just kind of shows you like just another like fucked up thing that he does and 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 a fucked up situation and in a fucked up way. And and it just it, it's 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 a good start to the movie because it, it says, Hey, this is a fucked up situation. And this is how it's going to show you that everything is, is all gone to do. No, yeah, I, I, I agree, love. man. It, yeah. No, if there's one bad guy in the whole show, like not the angels, not, you know, whatever else is going on, it's probably Ikari, like commander Ikari, like changes that sucks, man. I think, Ro, you're having the same real- realization that I had as I was watching the show um, again, because I just recently watched it this whole month from the beginning in anticipation for the movie. But you kind of are able to almost feel sorry for Chinji in yeah. the beginning because, yeah, like you said, he kind of comes in, they're forcing him to do this. And as I kept watching the show, I'm like, man, I feel like, you know, in a way we're meant to kind of reflect ourselves on himself, you know, because of some of the actions that they're making him do or some of the reactions that he has. And again, I got to like start just saying like, hey, he's a 14 year old boy. So of course he's going to make these decisions because he's just not mentally there, especially because he wasn't raised by a mom. His dad kind of like threw him on who knows where some other part of the world. So he needed him. So it's just kind of kind of crazy. Yeah, and I think it's that that brokenness that kind of I don't know. Like I guess you guys are now starting to validate the character of Sinji, and obviously I'll have, I'll play along. Like yes, of course. Like that <laughs> kind of. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no. But, no, no. but, but obviously it's because I understand the depth of his character. But like no, yeah, mm-hmm. like I, I you guys have like great points, and I think well, at the end of the day, like I I like learning. Like watching the show for the first time was experiencing it through him. And whether I wouldn't agree on, like, his cowardness later on and stuff like that, there's a lot of elements that you're right. Like, he's been kind of, like, orphaned, so to speak. And then, yeah. like, e- even in, in a situation now, like, with Asuka that he's, like, attracted to. And this is not even talking about, like, Ray and those interactions earlier. But it's, like, in this movie, like, that interaction with Asuka is, like, at one point, he hasn't really had any kind of, like, actual contact too much with, like, people in that capacity. So can you just imagine him being, like, obsessed with this girl like we, we kind of don't know it because he has bigger like responsibilities and things to worry about. And then, you know, it's a natural, imp- like, I mean, gross, but it's a human impulse to just be that obsessive at, at anything that you're not familiar with. And I don't know. It's just definitely very human. Like, which no, 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 definitely, man. It's just, I think, but you know, I agree. Like if I was judging him just based on the movie that we just saw, I would do want to say like this movie just makes him seem like he is the worst character. And maybe that's why we do finish the show of feeling like, oh, man, he's just the worst. <laughs> Nobody likes him because the movie strongly tells you that he's just like sucks, man. Like the whole time that Misato has to like carry him around to like, you know, get into the Ava. It's like, dude, like you're wasting so much time. You could have gone gone there a lot earlier and possibly helped Asuka. And you guys could have like had a completely different ending. But it's just like, yeah, you just watch him be dragged from uh, scene to scene by Misato. And at this point, what? He's so upset because he killed Kawara, right? Um, yeah, that's so, exactly, yeah, yeah. That's exactly why. And so that's another oh, thing, too. It's like, that's still, like, I get it because that would be going, you know, talking a little bit more about the show. But that was just kind of the thing. It's like he had built such a special connection with him. Even though mm-hmm. he already has all these people that he owes more to, yeah. like, you know, Asuka, Ray, like, Misato, and all those people are being abandoned by him. 
because he just can't get over like Kawaru's death. And but, not saying that's not significant because obviously into the whole Evangelion story, it plays a lot into it. But it's just kind of like, damn, dude, like you suck. <laughs> like, dude, Kawaru was kind of cool, man. Like, I, you know, cool, watching yeah. that episode, it's like, I want a friend like that. I want a friend that's just like following me along and thinks I'm like the greatest thing on the planet. And it's just kind of like, that's how he made him feel because nobody really. Why do you think I had a kid? <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Oh man, uh, yeah, that's fu- funny. Fun- funny thing that I wanted to ask, but have you guys ever dreamed about piloting your moms? <laughs> each other's mom, not, not your mom, your mom. So, so each other's moms, <laughs> dude. Nope, I think that's it. I'm done. <laughs> not that question. <laughs> oh man, it's kind of great it, question. It, it, in my situation, I think it'd be more like Attack and Titan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's kind of like the cool thing when you get that final reveal. You know, this whole thing that like the whole time like Changi has been kind of like his mom has been protecting him because his mom technically her soul's inside the Ava unit. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that you know this time in the movie I was really able to pay attention. That's like, man, at the end like Sasuke was about to like her mom was about to start piloting like moving the Ava yeah. by by itself. And I'm like, oh man, I wish we would have gotten that scene. You know, that would have been freaking cool. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, in in this reiteration, we know a little bit about her mom, but not like, I don't know. It's like, see, that's where I get a little like confused now that I watched everything. I can't tell you, I can't pick apart where I pulled certain information and bits and pieces from because I, I, again, I didn't get a chance to rewatch it. But yeah, I mean, that's another thing too, like Asuka's relationship with her, like, or her life story. Like, it's another one that I was super into too, because she seems to be like a prodigy child, but yeah, you know, that super like genius, yeah. yeah. Like, and later, is she German adult. or something? Or German, yeah, German, yeah. And then later, there, there was talks of her being a clone and something else. And it's just like you know, I I don't even know. <laughs> like, I think in the day the the rebuild movies, they definitely get into that her being a clone. Where in this, like, you know, I think Ray Ray, it's like we're in the oh, third, absolutely. we're in the third version of her in this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, I love seeing Ray again. It's yeah, not, it's yeah. not the same build. Oh, you know, we're watching, yeah, because we're watching this version of it. But like, I loved. I think Ray was just another character that I guess when you watch the show, it has more impact. But then because the ending's not the same. But if you mm-hmm. carry, like, you watch the show, stop at those two episodes, and then you watch the ending, I think it's beautiful because you've had this character that's been so mysterious that you want to. Like, I was talking to, about it at work with my cousin. Um, and we were just talking about like her, right? Like, she's like, what's the deal with Ray? Like, I know there's something. What, why does her and Ikari like get a lot? Like, you know, I'm like, ooh, hold on. I'll wait. I'll wait to tell <laughs> you. And it's just like that mystery. Like, I, I missed that of like, you know, especially with Sinji trying to figure her out, kind of being romantically interested in her, but then also just being very curious by her. Like, and well, then later finding out what she is. Like, I don't to know. me, that that would be a weird relationship because you know I think the movie, especially in the movie, because in the show I never really get the feel that like she looks like his mom, but like in the movie they specifically they make her look just like his mom, and that kind of like weirds me out. I'm like, <laughs> like I don't like this. I don't like thinking that like you know this this girl that he could potentially like have feelings for it's also like his it looks exactly like his mom almost. <laughs> and then you get that scene where he freaking sticks his hand in her torso, and you're like, oh yeah. Oh, Ikari? Where that was Ikari? super yeah. awkward. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck? And it's like... There, 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 there's so much I didn't remember. So I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And without going deep diving into that, but that's the whole idea, too. It's like you imagine the dad with so many reiterations of, like, Ray and just kind of, like, how that's been and kind of what possibilities there were. And if anything, this goes to show you... But, I mean, we know the issue with it is that he's just obsessed with, like, trying to see his wife his again. His wife so. again, Yeah. Which is a crazy reason to kill everybody, but... Dude, it's so easy to see this movie, like, on Netflix as many times as you want, but truly, because this was the first time this movie was ever shown, in, to my understanding, in North America, which was awesome, oh. and I think that's why a lot of people want to go see it, but seeing the bi- all the violence in the beginning, man, like, it kind of, like, it did make me a little bit feel, like, weird and strange, <laughs> just because I knew I was watching this with a, full, a room full of people, and it's just something about, like, watching humans kill other humans that are tech almost defenseless in a way it's just like ah oh, man like this is just kind of like it's crazy i don't know like i I just love that about it man it was- well that was <laughs> nice it's, it's, and, and it's non-stop like it just, yeah, continues it just keeps going, going and going and then you get to like some of those last uh couple characters in the lab which you know ultimately mm-hmm. you know that that gets like dragged down but it's like i love that that you know clearly they're all like 
the masses are dying. And then as you're getting to like those people that are a little bit more significant to the story, like you're feeling it with them because they just keep hearing people like left and right, gunshots everywhere. And like you already talked about what you're going to do and you're kind of just defenseless and hopeless at this point. And then clearly we know at the end that Ray's the I, one who technically released just, them, but they don't really I, get saved. I just think it's so cool the nerve it's technically there to save us against any angel attacks. But then when it comes to like human and human, it's like they're not ready for it at all. Like, you know, we, the, uh, the army pretty much just came in the UN just kind of came in and like made like all their defenses didn't matter because all the defenses are built towards like defending against angels, not humans. So that was just kind of crazy. And then yeah. there's even that line where the guy's like, is this why they lower, lower the budget for like our the defense uh, kind of like got taken away. So it's kind of funny that, it was almost like they were getting ready to do this. Oh, because they knew fucking Gendo Ikari was like crazy, like ahead of yeah, time. Yeah, the whole time. <laughs> I mean, you need a crazy man to like, you know, be ambitious and, and kind of do his thing. So they were clearly writing on his like research and everything he was doing just because they were, he was just a vehicle for what they wanted to do as well. Which I just still think it's funny that it's ultimately the same thing, but just through different means, I guess, you know? Yeah. No, and you know, and I don't know if you remember this but he has his last name he took it from his wife like he's one of those people that like you know he married her and he took her last name and people kind of like kind of thinking like well did he do that because she had more like her name was more recognized in the scientific community so he kind of did that because it's kind of like if you marry a celebrity like of course you're not gonna mind like Roe, if you marry kim kardashian you're gonna be like yeah honey i'll be Ro kardashian because okay. then your name has okay. more meaning to it <laughs> even though my name doesn't start with a c or a k <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Because what all all of them start with a K? Is that a thing? Sorry, yeah. now you're messing with me. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Kim, huh. Chloe, Courtney, the guy. I swear, I swear Chloe's the mom. The, <laughs> the, 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 the Jenners too. Tell, tell me what episode you really want to record about. You want to talk about the Kardashians? No. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, no. no, but but I, I I will say like I I really I I I really do feel that a lot a lot of more people need to kind of see this though. Like they need to watch the show and need need to see this version uh, of the ending instead what? of the other one. Because of like I don't know I I feel like a lot of people don't really understand why someone wouldn't want to live and kind of like th this kind of shows you like that, that that was kind of the point of like that ending or whatever it, he has a choice to like to, like do you want to live or not and then a lot of people like don't know what trauma is like or or haven't had like messed up childhoods or whatever it is that 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 they've been lucky to to have so that they. They don't understand why somebody wouldn't, and and I feel that this show, and then the movie kind of like ends, it kind of climaxes at that point where where you've seen all his suffering, all his torture, all his neglect, all his trauma, and it uh, kind of just correlates to this point where he has to, like, he's able to make the choice whether, like, humanity lives or, or dies. But no, in this one, in this one, yeah. they die, right? And yeah. In this, that, yeah. This one no, I think in this one, what do you mean, like in the end of it? Like the yeah, end? they're all just dead. Yeah. They never like. No, come they back. they make a point that once they're technically like once they oh, have they're the all will, one, like one. Once well, they, no, yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. No, no, but yeah. once they like, if they want to come back, they will be able to come back. They just okay. have to find the will to come back. And again, you have to like read somebody in, the, in between the lines. And and this is like me trying to prepare myself for this show again watching the whole show, watching people talk about the show in other podcasts, like episode by episode. And it's just kind of like, you know, I was able to pick up some stuff, but, but some stuff is just like, unless you really go on the Wikipedia page or you really go and buy these books or you see these interviews from the creator, it's so impossible. And I think that's what makes this show just so great. Like this idea that you don't get answers, but maybe if you do look, you know, in the right places, you might find those answers. And then you're trying to communicate to other people those answers, but those people might not care because they don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> it's, 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 it, it becomes this madness thing, and that's that's what I'm talking about. Like, I mean, getting just like this mad this thing that just makes you go crazy the more you think about it. It, and it, like, it, I, it, 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 it is it one of those things that like the the truth is is inside your heart. <laughs> well, no. I mean, like Raul, have you seen the movies? Like the other movies, no, not the, those. Just, okay. just just the end of uh, okay. uh, Evangelion and and, so, and the show. 
So I recommend watching them because I think this is what I still ultimately You've love about it. You've been recommending that I watch them. Yeah. <laughs> they will be, yeah because, well, and it would right now be a good time because at least you would appreciate the differences. And, mm-hmm. and given that I don't necessarily care about those movies more than everything else because the original story and then this movie to finish that story is kind of the more like serious, like more like in depth and more like mental one for me. Um, but I just, I really do like that whatever you like in Evangelion, you can reach in different points and get something a little bit different. Cause yeah, with those other movies, they go in a com- not completely different like way with it, but they definitely do something different to the point where they even end up in space. So it's like, you wait, know. Wait. And- so, so, so are they remakes or what are the movies? Are they prequels? Are they. So they're they're kind of weird, man. You can almost like, take them as they're like alternate realities. Especially if you want, if you watch the second one, it ends in a way that makes you think like this is another reality oh, that Kawaro, uh, yeah, he's trying to stop. But yeah. then I guess you know the whole Japanese, uh, the Japan um, tsunami happened, and then the creator kind of changed what he wanted the movies to be, and then the third one was in space became, <laughs> like, became something else and then the fourth one which and dude these gaps between release also is kind of like long i think between the, like the third one and the fourth one it was like almost like a 10 year gap you know before they came out so it's kind of it's crazy man. it's the fourth one where ikari has the freaking crazy cyclops, eye yeah. cyclops thing <laughs> oh yeah dude like that's what i'm telling you like and it, and it's also good because in those movies you get a little bit of action like the the movie like the story is the same up to a certain point then it splits off and it goes crazy and you, you have things like uh, freaking Asuka going berserk or like in beast mode or whatever it was called and that was really fun to watch and you have um what's the girl's name mari the one that he ends up with yeah, yeah mari. mari oh my god hate which mari. makes no sense but also I there's another mari. character entirely that who by the way is like probably still one of like the more fun characters to have but she has like such of a what is it called privilege like perspective into this because she used to work with Ikari. Um, now she's kind of like a, a senior like pilot, and so she's just a little older too. Like it's this whole thing, Raul. Like watch them, and there's like they're so enjoyable. They have more action, so like you'll get a whole different whirlwind yeah. of like Evangelion, and it's just fun to watch. But I, I think in this one, just I do like that. I, I do like the ending. I like the whole idea that Evangelion is ultimately about that uh, eradication of humanity and kind of reshuffle into one. Um, yeah. Yeah, clearly now I'm always like, ooh, infinite Sukuyomi, but well, I, was gonna, <laughs> I was just gonna say that like, you can find its influence on like a Naruto and other things yeah. where they're trying to like put humanity in this like matrix kind of state where we're all in peace in our minds. But at least with this one, it's more fucked up because with Madara, I think he was still doing for the betterment of humanity. Oh, yeah. For this one, it's Ikari trying to get back to his like wife, sort of. No, you know, with and Naruto, it's like... you always get the feeling they could. Possibly somebody could wake you up from the pod where this is like, like you, you exploded. <laughs> you're you became... blended. You're cold pressed human juice <laughs> like, yeah. all over the world. Yep. I mean, it's it is interesting. Like what I was saying, like you know, I think if you go to Japan, it's impossible to escape the influence of Evangelion. And I haven't been to Japan, so I can't really speak on that behalf. But I'm sure that people go crazy <laughs> for it. But, but it I'm going to propose things... it anyway. Well, well, dude. So the creator. Ano, he still does a lot of like movies, like live action movies. Like he did the Chin Godzilla, and he's had oh, yeah, a lot yeah. of oh. in universe. So it's just one of those things where, like, I know that America is currently like trying to like you know bring Naruto into like live action. They have success with the One Piece, and that's with working with the creators. So I would love to see this show a live like version of it, like a movie. I don't want. Mm. I, I don't want him to be part of his Shin universe. I don't want him to direct it. I want him to be a consultant and have an input on it because at the end of the day i want to watch an evangelion movie and actually for once come out of it being like i understand what i just saw and I don't have <laughs> my own interpretation of it. <laughs> well that's what i was wondering i'm like I, I was wondering if they were going to do any kind of new shin evangelion but it's an i think it's one of the movies that's already like part of that universe uh three point Zero plus one point zero <laughs> twice upon a time. <laughs> uh, but, but, but but that's what I'm saying. It's like 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 you have a one, good one, point. Zero, about, zero, one, you know, one, zero. <laughs> binary infinite like period and all this stuff. <laughs> no, but it's like but you know like especially because you talk about like the Shin universe and for you guys listening like you might not even be this level of nerdiness or maybe this is not your little subgroup. But yeah, like the whole Shin universe is gonna be a whole thing and with what like is common. That? It, so it's Common Rider, Common Rider, uh, Godzilla, and Evangelion, and Ultraman, and, and Ultraman. Ultraman. Yeah. What's Common Rider? 
Uh, it's, I, I said Prime. It's pretty good. It's violent. It, what is it? it, it it's another like like Power Ranger esque so but it's a solo, looking, solo adventure. Yeah. Get, do it on a motorcycle. Um, but anyway, so out of all these Ghost movies Rider? and all these kind of, like kind of not on like, fire, not, not like on fire, but like that kind Renegade? of similar to, like yeah, Renix. <laughs> I don't know. Go watch it, bro. <laughs> but no, but, but but the idea is that they're creating this universe too. So which gives us more opportunities to see Evangelion in a different like world, like kind of you were mentioning. Oh, dude! And they already have the toy too of like the whole combination. Think Mega Sword, but with those characters, dude. and it's like it's pretty cool. If, dude, if I got to see like an Evangelion, even for like less than five minutes in live in a live action anything i would probably like shit myself at the idea of like seeing this like this thing interact with like a real environment um i know in ready player one they make reference to them but i don't know if they actually you know come out of the book yeah yeah yeah, and in ready player one they make a reference like everything you can think about Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah, but I don't I, think there's anything particularly in there for it besides you know, the reference. Yeah. Pe- people always try to be like, oh, would you rather pilot an Ava or a Gundam? And people are always kind of like crapping in a way on, Ava, on Avas because they're like, oh, you know, they're kind of skinny looking and stuff. But if you think about it, just the idea that they have their soul is like their shield and they can attack with it. I feel like that's almost like just for that reason itself, like I would want to pilot an Ava, you know, if I was going into a battle with... Mecha Godzilla, like I do. The idea of just having like this AT field. I would never pick a Neva. Never. Why not? Because of the dude, you, you feel what the Neva feels. Uh, yeah, but I mean, that, even that, like, that alone. But, but I, even I, I'd rather be like do but, a, but a Jaeger or whatever. It, I think that makes it more able for you to like really power it, like yeah. really like manure with it, because then it's like it's an extension of you. I mean, in, in other freaking fiction type of like freaking theories it's like if you don't have that connection with your robot like what do you really have man it's not love you guys you need that energy <laughs> you need that <laughs> yeah but, 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 I, but, I, I, i'd do that but you two pilots so that's more annoying I'm man okay I, that. i'd rather i'd rather I, solo it than deal with like a freaking yeah. extra person that no nope. one can have like a well i mean clearly they're like Train, Dude. but at the same time, I don't know. I just can't leave it. I mean, to another and you know, like, Guillermo del Toro when he made Pacific Rim, like that was a hundred percent. I'm sure there's an interview that I came in, like put in this episode <laughs> where he's like, "Yeah, Evangelion. That's where I took all my inspiration for that." And I think that's maybe as close as we're gonna come to for now, as far as like you know, getting that. And that that was almost like Pacific Rim is such a perfect movie to me that it almost like that does make me happy to think about it. As, especially as like it's like a substitute to Evangelion, even though it's not. In a movie, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. I don't know. I like the idea of Avas, and I think the whole idea about the shield is really important. Like the yeah. what's it called, the AT the shield. shield, yeah. The, um, and it's like the whole idea that like in well, even in this movie, like good segue back to the movie. Like we see Asuka like finally discover like the potent like her potential because she's finally bridging the whole thing that hey, this is my mom's soul, so therefore if I just like accept and and use that, then I'm more powerful. Like I can control the shield. But yeah. you don't even get to see a whole lot of it. So can you imagine, like, just? Oh, I mean, dude, you see, you yeah. see it in other, you see it in other movies a little bit too. But yeah, like, it just gets crazier. Like, what they can do with the Ava Shield is insane. Like, with the AT field, so insane because it's just a whole extra, extra weapon that they have on top of like being strong, being able to have weapons, missiles, and they can go not necessarily berserk, but like you know, Asuka does beast mode, and then later they yeah, and then like if you get a part of another stuff. angel, you kind of can reheal yourself, you know, yeah. regenerate. Uh, so like, like obviously, Ro, angel like, juice. You, <laughs> <laughs> like Ro, now that you're rewatching Evangelion, like that's the thing with Asuka. Like Asuka is meant to be like the best pilot. Her Ava is not a prototype. It's like the first one that's supposed to be for the feel. So it's just like, yeah, like what you're saying, Ramona, if like Asuka knew from the beginning that her mom was inside of that thing, man, and she was oh, making yeah. her proud, like the whole thing, man, like she would like her, her levels would have been like off the charts. She would have been obviously the one like Chinji would have been more like, I guess you, you still need Chinji because he's more of like the the key. I don't know if I, that's the right term for I me. Mean, to come yeah. Like the key. yeah, the key to opening like everything that needs to happen. Well, because it's most just, of it revolves around the Ava Zero, like yeah, zero exactly. One. That's, that, that, that's why. If it wasn't that's for why. that, like it would be the Asuka show, and <laughs> it'd be better, right? <laughs> yeah, I would. Even though she doesn't come in the show to like eight, ep- seven or eight episodes, which is crazy. Yeah, yeah. But you know, then after that, it's just your your hopes and dreams are fulfilled. 
I don't know. <laughs> no, I mean, but I, I do like I don't know, and that's why I don't want to forget about like someone like Ray because Ray too mm-hmm. is beyond the most. Well, now I guess is she the most significant then? Because like to me, like the fact that she is like the ultimate Ikari, yeah. destructor of the world, and and just like I, I I mean, this is why I had it as my screensaver and like in my dreams for so. But I love Whoa. the imagery at the end of like her head, yeah. just kind of like in the background. Like as as Asuka and freaking Sinji just wake up to this this yeah. destruction, like this genocide, like this is insane. Well, you got to remember, like Ray and Kawaro are like the same thing. Like you know, yeah. even when they meet each other, like oh, we're alike. So it's just like she is an technically she's like an angel, and you know, you do see her finally in the movie, like she flies and she can levitate <sighs> herself. So it's just kind of like <laughs> Do that I mean, again, she, can, she can come and visit me in my dreams anytime she wants. Man. Like yeah. uh, Ray, Ray's one of those things where like. I've been wanting a tattoo of her for so long, but nothing makes me happy. Like nothing that I see, no art work done by anybody, no anything makes me happy. And it's just like, <laughs> it's impossible for me to say like, I want this where I, nothing satisfies me when I see anything about her. Yet I love her. So it's just like, it's weird. You need like a, a, a place in your body that you can have a horizon tattoo. Cause it'd be amazing to have her like big giant head just kind of floating over the the red. Like, <laughs> I thought about getting be weird great. with it. Trust me, man. <laughs> but like, where do you put that? Like on your weird. forehead? What do you mean weird with it? <laughs> well, there's a lot, you know, like Ray. You can kind of like the idea that she's like t- kind of sort of a clone. So imagine like having that too with other rays that are freaking naked floating behind like the ray that you know. And this is like this idea of like, wait, why are they? Why are there floating other? Like for people that don't know who the character, why are there more of that character in the background? Like it's just like it's just like, how do you explain Ray? It's just like I don't know. It's just it's crazy. Like she's just like, like the weirdest golden one. Sun. Yeah, I mean she freaking yeah. becomes a giant angel at the end of the movie. Like she's just like not even above. an angel, just like a giant, giant, bigger than the angels. I guess I mean I say an angel just because of her <laughs> wings and you know the idea mm-hmm. that you know she looks all white and yeah, but it's just uh I don't know, man. I don't know. She's just incredible. So, like, in this movie, that's another part, too, that I'm, like, the timing is, is really what causes everything right. Because if Sinji would have gotten into the his Ava sooner, then Rey would have never got into the point that she did. Yeah. Right? Because it was the fact that Sinji wouldn't get in his fucking Ava that ruined it. And then at the end, then it was the mm-hmm. fact that he did get in his Ava that ruined it. Because then if he wasn't in his Ava, I know. She, wouldn't, she wouldn't have turned into turned him into the tree of life. Because after that happened, he was useless. Because then after that, he was just about basically the vessel for, like, the yeah. whole, um, oh, my God, I totally spaced out on the word for it. But, yes, yeah. and then, you know, like, impales him in him and all that. Like, it's it's a beautiful, like, just metaphor and symbolism and just how all that plays out. I think that's what's really hard to explain, and I'm glad we don't have to do that this episode. But I think that's what's really great about people who are watching it for the first time or rewatching it is just that that part of it is just, like, in this ending is beyond, like, it's just crazy to think about. Dude, I love those um, other Avas, the ones with the dummy plug, the ones that Asuka fights. Oh, like, I, yeah, I, like yeah. I love them, man. Like, I love the way they look. Even their face at times, like, I'm like, could they have done something different? But I think it's just, like, for the show, like, that's perfection, especially at the end where they sort of become, like, race face on them. It's just, I don't know, man. It's so mm-hmm. cool. So, uh, it, it just kind of hit me as uh, Ramon, you were talking so, so th- this ending uh, reminds me a lot of the the uh, De- uh, Devil Man Crybaby ending, mm, and, and, yeah, and yeah. I, I guess that I guess that one remind, remind me of this one. <laughs> doesn't yeah. doesn't that one also end with them being like on a beach? Yeah, no, no, remember, <laughs> remember when we recorded? No, no, yeah, it was. Remember when we recorded I that one? I, I was so angry because I'm like, this is literally a rip off of Evangelion. Like, about yeah, fifty percent of them show was Evangelion. And it was like that. It ended with a big old fucking head. It ended up with a bunch of people dying. And then, because it was like, the, the, yeah. the planet blew up. It was in pieces. Well, the, yeah, man, the, I mean, the, 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 the angel was, was like on a rock with a dead main character. I, I yeah. haven't read any of the Devilman Crybaby manga or the original show, but I do want to say I think Devilman Crybaby was there before Evangelion. So who knows who was from who? Yeah, because Devil, Devilman Crybaby is like from the Whoa. 70s. Yeah. Well, then Evangelion Whoa. did it better. Oh. Wait, what? <laughs> so Devilman Crybaby itself is like a manga. It's He's from like the 70s. He's from like early. Oh, like, yeah. That's early, right. Because like, that, that yeah, one yeah. they were playing to. And so what yeah. you saw was more of a, hey, let's, let's like, 
if whatever many chapters or however many episodes they they were originally they're like let's compress them into these 10 episodes and that's what we got in oh, like 2019 or yeah, 2018 i didn't know that yeah. Remember, was it like that one kid where I was watching the TV? They kept on showing the Devil Man, like old hero or something like that. Oh yeah, that's like, right. Yeah, yeah. They yeah, ended up like watching on the TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So see, it, yeah. Okay, damn cool. man, it does kind of make you. You're right about that though, bro. Like these two shows kind of do go together. Like sorry, like Devil Man Cry Baby and Me and Justin Evangelion. When you kind of do have that angelical devil thing, so especially at the end when they're fighting mm-hmm. each other, kind of does remind you a lot of uh, Evangelion. Yeah, but no, no, and I, I, I think that's a big reason why I like the the ending of uh, Devil Man Crybaby. It, it because of and same thing with this one that like it, it has that big like like big symbolic meaning be, behind like everything and 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 just the fact that like at the very end you have this like God t- kind of uh, apocalypse type of situation where where life kind of continues or completely changes or and it, dude, it it's so like mind-bending and and it, it it just makes you think like in, in in if you were in this situation what would you do and 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 i don't know just so much symbolism and and stuff that it just makes you think and and, and ponder and and the, the, freak out the answer to that is misato all the way inappropriate <laughs> i know but misato is the answer to well, what i do uh, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> i mean did, can we talk about her too though because like she she's no. like another really significant person that <laughs> i hate in this movie yeah. yeah like like she's legitimately such a freaking she's awesome. badass. And it's badass for sure raul another reason why you got to watch the movies because she becomes even more badass they play her down a little bit more but still like a bigger role that she plays too i'll watch them I'll Thank renew you, my Prime Video subscription. And then if you want, we can talk about the three movies together, or three, four movies, whatever, the four movies together. And- oh, God. I, I, I still we... got to watch Unstoppable first, though. What? What is no. Unstoppable? Or, or Unbreakable? Un- oh, my God. I was forget his name. I, I know exactly what you're trying to say, and I'm not going to correct you because... Invisible? <laughs> you don't, yeah, don't Invincible? correct them. <laughs> Undefeatable. <laughs> I was forget his name. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm also watching Undead Unlock. Uh, I, I'm also watching Undead Unlocked that kind of messes me up too because they'll have unnames. Yeah, I mean, Miss yeah. Miss great, man. I mean, she's kind of yeah. at the end of the show, she's suffering because she lost like her lover. I forget his name, and you know, she's still kind of oh, like yeah. still like oh, kinda, like her. Yeah, Kaji, her one true love, and I dude, I like Kaji. Like Kaji, have nothing bad to say. <laughs> he about used her. her a lot. I mean, like in a good way. Like he loved her, but like he was he was yeah. just more of the type of like. Find the true woman. Let's go. Yeah. Tony. Yeah, it's a record. <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know what that reference was to, but let's continue. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, no. I mean, but those, the, yeah, going back to those Ava ones, that the flying ones that came out, that, that scene was beautiful. Like the whole Asta yeah. dying. Not because she was dying, of course. That was just terrible, but... Man, mm. yeah, like the freaking swarms. I mean, they look more like crows or vultures, but definitely they, when they were like they, picking her apart. Yeah, and clearly they play more crane like, and I don't know, like the whole thing's beautiful. Like those those fights are beautiful. Like again, Asuka figuring out like more of her potential, um, her having that fight, and then just having like the moment where she starts losing it when the fake spear of Lagania's or I can never say it. Anyways, mm-hmm. when the fake spear comes yeah. down and freaking traps her, and then they all ultimately like peck on her. Like, ah, oh, that was so good. It, it, this yeah. show slash movie makes you, f- like, just feel so many things so many times. Dude, I was surprised that that sphere broke her AT feel when she put it up. Because, like, it wasn't, like, you know, it was, like, a fake of the original. It was, like, a like almost a copy. So I'm surprised that even part of me felt that maybe the shock of seeing it was the reason why it even managed to penetrate her maybe. AT feel. Because I'm like, ah, oh, it cannot be as powerful as the original one. Which yeah. eventually does make it back from the moon. <laughs> Freaking change, he calls it back. Retrieve. And then he yeah. uses it later to like, like Thor. kind of mm-hmm. save, save whatever for a little bit. And then he just causes yeah. I mean, it was cool back. to see him like kind of like be in this like crucifixion pose mm-hmm. and stuff. Like that was really cool. You know yeah. what I really appreciate about this movie that I wish a an, an, uh, movie would do it and probably win an Academy Award for doing it? The fact that halfway in the movie, you know, there was like credit scenes and <laughs> oh, those credit scenes 
lasted for a good i want to say like five eight minutes eight i was able to go to the maybe. bathroom and come back and Dude, I, I really I, appreciated I, I, it I, I went and got a, a refill on my on my drink why, why are movies doing that man like have a hey this is an intermission and you know especially like oppenheimer it would have you're not understanding dude, dude, uh, dude, i feel like more and more movies are becoming three hours and so yes definitely so definitely and, decrease the. I mean, I love watching trailers. So that's a hard ask, but half the time we get there like right as the movie's starting, anyways. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, I can go without like so many trailers. Definitely no weird credit I interventions. Like <laughs> I, I, I mean, yes, of course. But like half of the time, we already see so. Like right now, we watch everything because it comes up on TikTok or whatever, like YouTube randomly. And so by the time you get there. Yes, of course, more enjoyable to watch it big, but it, I just think it's kind of funny that you know we obviously knew there was like more to the movie, but it's funny that like I imagine you not really knowing anything, and this is like you finally going to the movie theater to see how the show should have ended or how you want to like see what everybody else is talking about, and then you get there, and then this happens, and then you're thinking like, oh, this can't be it, but then it's just like the again the credits continued for like a good amount of time that I feel like somebody in the u.s might have walked away for a second thinking like hey is the movie really over and ask somebody outside <laughs> only to come back and find out that it was it still continues yeah you better come back with a bucket of popcorn otherwise you'll look like a fool this game or or with an empty bladder you, because you everyone know I, can see you know that, how i knew true. we had a good crowd when people started clapping to the nicole kidman amc uh introduction <laughs> Uh, why? Because why, why, why did they clap? Oh my god, it's a, it's a thing. Like people really love that that intro. Like people in California when they go see a movie in that place, like they stand up and they clap, and it's like a big thing. Why? Yeah, no, because I don't know. It's just like I guess it's the idea of when it came out during COVID, and this yeah. idea that's just like it's so Remember. silly that people just like freaking love it. <laughs> Are you believing him, Raul? Oh guys, you guys, you guys aren't Bro, in the. Do you believe them? <laughs> you guys aren't in the Twitter. Sort I just thought because the trailers were finally over. I'm like, yeah, they're done. I agree. <laughs> I was just clap, clap, clap. Like, Why are they clapping? I they almost clapped. Like, like, I I clap. <laughs> you should have clapped. Then <laughs> I, I then I could have asked you. I should have stood right up. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, like I'm saying, like this is this was a great movie just to see with the crowd, the crowd we were yeah. with. I, you know, I just felt like everybody, you know, during the quiet scenes, they were quiet during the scenes where you should have been applauding they were applauding yeah yeah i think so too i mean i think the moment that for me i was waiting for to rewatch this and like in the big screen tv was the moment at the end where like obviously everybody starts dying but it's, it was beautiful to see again ray kind of coming down and like taking like in her form taking everybody and, and kind of giving them what yeah. because she was showing them like people they love right and that so, was, yeah, that so was I guess, that's great yeah. like that was that was a beautiful moment like i remember especially when she got to that one uh freaking nerve employee the one girl that was like freaking <laughs> out the whole time and i don't know i felt embraced too like no, when yeah, i go like i want to be embraced by ray like just take, like if the cuban go. instrumentality thing was happening you're like in another part of the world like it would happen right now like me and you Ro, <laughs> mama, we would see our wives and i uh, would see my daughter Ro, i don't know who you would see us you would, see, would ray. see you guys Ro- Ro would see Ray because there's Lucky. people that they didn't have they didn't have anybody so oh, that's, those people that's like sad. Ray, Ray would appear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Damn, you saying I have nobody? I'm saying <laughs> Ray would appear for you. That would be freaking cool, man. That's a stun, though. <laughs> like once we us three met up in instrumentality, and I'm like, hey Ramon, who showed up for you? And I'm like, who showed up for you? And you said Ray. I was like, David. That's, I'm jealous, <laughs> David. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah, though I'm glad I got to see my wife and daughter, I'll be like, I'm kind of a little bit jealous. How mad would you be if it was each other? And it's just like, <laughs> like the wife, the wife come from the back. It's like, wait, did you see me? I'm like, yeah, hmm, damn. But totally. You know, the, the cool thing about that is you see like how some of the people that work for Nerve, like the one guy that saw Miss Sato, because you know he clearly had a crush on her, or the one girl oh, yeah. that saw that other, uh, I forget her name, the scientist you know, lady, the scientist lady. <laughs> So it's yeah. like, yeah. Except, you know, in Ikagar, Ikari did Ikari, get his whole yeah, thing. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. His, yeah, like the commander, like he's he didn't get to go into instrumentality. And this, that's how I took it. Yeah, I mean, I guess not. Yeah, so his, his, his was all like jacked half. up. Yeah. Yeah, he was like the only one that got like the true like bad ending to the game. <laughs> oh, that's what he yeah. deserved. Ha. Yeah, take that. Make... <laughs> yeah, that's what he deserved. That's the appropriate ending. Do not yeah, pass go. Do not collect $200. <laughs> I guess we didn't talk about the other people, but I guess in in this movie they're not as significant to this story. 
No, they. they I, I was mean, thinking they're... of like Ikari's like assistant, but that's more in the movies that he's more significant because he's the one that tells Sinji a little bit more about like his mom. I mean, he shit. loved he loved his mom. Like yeah, he, yeah. that's who he saw when you know they yeah. you know yeah. So <laughs> it's <was> like he... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like Sinji's like, wait, what? No, I'm kidding. He wasn't there, of course. But <laughs> like, what? Like, what the hell did my mom like? All these guys, yeah. It's like, wait, what? that that's hilarious. Why is half the office? Uh, <laughs> oh why, why is she afraid to to half the the company? <laughs> I, I forget her. <laughs> I, I forget her first name, but yeah, it would have been like Ikari, and then everybody would have been like Ikari, Ikari, and just like Sinji, like what? Like everybody's seen my mom, like guys. <laughs> that's that's. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. see my mom. Yeah. No. I mean, I did. No one is because no one loved him, yeah. and that's the <laughs> way you should stay. <laughs> How did you guys feel about like when they show Shinji playing in the sandbox? Was that like like I don't know like I was like what is this trying to say? The scene was kind of like long. I don't know if you guys like appreciated that or not. I mean, I think not in the movie by itself. I think in the long scheme of things, like with the show and everything. Yeah, it's just like um, famous. Yeah, that's another like nice memory, like trying to instill more positive thoughts of him in you. But like I don't know, like I don't know. That's what I'm telling you. I think at the end of the day, like. My feedback for Evangelion about being so good and, and about the overall concept being, like, so crazy. Um, but I think the sad part is that, yeah, Sinji is always, like, the funny thing that I like to spew with that description. Because I think, yeah, like, he does have a ultimate really great, not character development, but he has a great character. Like, I, I just someone you want to watch. You want to see him, like, go through the struggle. You hate him through it the whole time. But also... Like I said, later on, you kind of understand why they chose him, why he's the person that we we are kind of seeing this whole thing go through. And I think at the end of the show, I did like that ending because it was kind of very in your head. And I think at the end of the day, man, who knows? And when we die, all we see is a bunch of like cartoons or something like who knows? And so like even those kind of things were kind of like fun to watch. But then in this one, just the whole fact that he gets to kind of relive the I don't know. That's why I see I was conflicted of him reliving people telling him that, yay, we do accept you. We do want you to be a part of this. We want you to be alive. And I still hate him. So it's, I don't know. Like, it's just a funny. Like, Here, here's me journey. asking you guys a question that I don't know the answer to. Is the reason why at the end of the movie, like, he and Asuka were, like, together, even though we sort of saw her die, mm-hmm. is it because he can bring people that have died also back or people that have died like Misato can potentially come back or is it maybe because Asuka truly wasn't there because maybe the you know the Avas when they were attacking her they didn't really destroy her plug so she could have been like still somewhere in you know in, in the body parts in the lake or wherever the hell they were eating her is that maybe why she was able to come back so I don't know if I've ever heard of a real answer to that but I always wanted to think that it was Ray's choice like Clearly, like, Ray was kind of letting Sinji, like, us, like, we were watching Sinji's decision, but I yeah. think, like, she might have done the same thing with Asuka, right? And I think part of that was because of the relationship between them three, and then just the fact that Asuka also supposedly had, like, died in her Ava as a result of all this. Like, I to me, yeah. it was just, like, all oh, Ray felt like saving them two or picking them two, but I don't know. Okay. And maybe kind I... of a way to repopulate the world. Too. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so the way that I actually took it was that it, it wasn't really her. Like, it, 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 it was like a not, not like a hologram, but like a for real hologram. So, <laughs> not, not a hologram at all, I guess. But yeah, like I, I thought she was just created it, but it wasn't the real one. It was just kind of like a simulation to kind of I'm, interact. I'm not- with Shinji to I'm gonna get throw him to my nature. Pokeball and I choose your interpretation, Ramon. Yeah, so see <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But no no, I mean not that it's seen that I call bullshit on that, but I think it's just I, I think what kind of makes you know that it's definitely Asuka is because she calls them disgusting. Disgusting. And then I think that just goes through the whole relationship that they've had so far. That yeah. she's just She's kind of like, she's never thought that he was enough for her. And even mm-hmm. in those moments where she's throwing him, herself at him, I think it's more because ultimately they're the same age, sort of, and then they're kind of like in the same situation. And it's like the real companionship that she's more prone to get is Sinji over mm-hmm. like freaking the guy Kaji or like anyone else, right? Like that's not the real romantic relationship that's going to happen. And so I think at the end of the day, 
the truest judge of character besides Rey, uh, the, the one who's going to judge Shinji the hardest besides Rey would be Asuka. And I think that's why they kept her alive because Rey let him get away with being like, I'll stay alive. And Asuka was like, you disgust me still. So it's like, I don't know. Like, that's how you should still feel about him. Like, you should still be, like, engrossed by him. Like, <laughs> no, no. Here's the thing, though, that, like, I think that that's how Shinji feels about himself. Too. Well, yeah, that's because he knows which, 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 which is why I thought like this is kind of like this mine. Th- this isn't for real. This is like yeah. how he kind of like feels or whatever. Especially because he had already gotten a glimpse of him like choking her in the kitchen scene. Oh, yeah. Maybe he was maybe he was thinking like this isn't real. So like I'm almost rejecting this. What is now the reality? Because like this person in front of me is probably not even real. So he like started choking her. And Ramon, as you were talking, I kind of got goosebumps, and I was like. You know, obviously he's choking her and she starts like putting her hand on his face and, you know, like showing him kindness and like, oh man, that kind of made me kind of give me a little chills, you know, because I, I would love to like be in a, in a place where I'm stressed or I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Somebody just like give me that moment, that gentle Aww. hand of like kindness and like, oh, I thought, you, me... <laughs> I thought you wanted the choking. I'm like, oh wait, I can help you. I'm like, <laughs> is that what we're supposed to be? Yeah. I don't, it, it, I, 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 <laughs> I can choke you and Raul can put his hand on your face and but, just be like, oh, it's okay. It's, but I no, it's, you. It, it's, it's clearly like, yeah, she's like disgusted by him because like pity. She's like, I pity you and you just disgust me. And like, you could never, that's like, you know, take, take me down. <laughs> well, and the thing too is like, he kind of, what would have been the right answer for him to decide to die along with everybody else? Like, right. Like that's kind of the thing. Like he should have yeah. chosen to like, live what everyone is going through but like he decided to be a whiny baby this whole time and now he thinks no. he deserves to like relive his life i'm like dude you're uh again ugh, the gestures so i think i mean ultimately whether asuka was real or not at that moment I, I think i'm glad that it all made us feel that way that it was kind of like reminding us how kind of a low life he is a little bit at the same time as like being somewhat a savior ultimately in whatever radiation you watch but then at the same time she's also forgiven him and yeah. i don't know I don't know, you, man. It's it's you, complicated. You know, like I yeah. obviously I obviously will never get a chance to like write these movies or, you know, have my own interpretation, like, you know, publicly. Now with that attitude. Now with that attitude. But I was like telling Raul that I'm like, I almost wish that, you know, they you know, when they did the rebuild movies, that the first movie would have been like, you know, obviously it was a shot to shot interpretation of what we saw on the show. But I almost wish there would have been a certain point where there would have been like a five years forward or something. And we did see like a changey that became more brave, became more like I piloted an Ava and this is what I was like, what I was born to do, even though I didn't know it at the time. And like, I would just love to see, again, a changey that's confident, that can pilot an Ava, can kick ass with it, can defeat angels. And he's almost like the leader of the group and nobody questions that. Because to me, that almost reminds me of like Gurren Lagan. You know, we see Simon. And Simon Simon's like the whiny little bee, but by, by the end of the, like, the show, you're like, holy shit, like Simon's yeah. the, the best. Yeah. <laughs> because he believes in the other guy that believes in him. <laughs> Oh, oh my, my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> one of my one of my friends at work also just got to that part in Good and Lagan where he dies, and she's oh. like, "No, why wouldn't you tell me?" I'm like, what? Well, duh! <laughs> like, why would I? <laughs> but uh, no, but I mean, but I think yeah, I, I definitely agree. Like, I I do kind of wish, but also at the same time, I don't. I just yeah, Sinji's such a hard character to really yeah. like. Again, say that you ever. I don't. I don't know who actually truly says that that's one of his favorite characters. I think it's meant to be disliked a lot of the times. Yeah. Um that's that's just the way that I'm always gonna feel. I but mean, I just, if you yeah. see a, if you see a kid with like a white shirt and that those kind of pants, he's gonna like punch him in the face. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I don't know. But uh, I like his motives though, at least though. That's there's always that, right? Like the motives of like yeah. like pleasing your dad. I don't know. That's I mean we didn't really talk about that element of it because we didn't talk really about the show, but you know, I guess if I could ask you guys one thing about the show, it's like, who, what's your favorite angel from, like, the, the the show? Like, which angel to you guys, like, speaks out, like, the most as far as, like, the way the battle went down or maybe the way it looks or maybe how close that angel itself got to, like, you know, reaching Adam? Well, I think the large one towards the end, I forget their names or anything like that, but the, no, the one, one that the was, names. like, so huge that it was, like, it looked like an eye with, like, almost, like, arms and it was, like, flat and curved. And yeah. then the whole thing that it was going to do was just going to slam down on Earth like a yes. freaking hard. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was a good one. That, that took, that it wasn't that like a team effort? Like, wasn't yeah, that like they, they were, like, were all, all three of them? Yeah. To catch it. Yeah. 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 That one, a, just because of that. I remember that being so cool. 
What about you, or do you remember anything of them, any of them? Um, I don't remember a lot of what they just looked like. Okay. And, and uh, like, in, in this one, it, it was the, that one that was all, like, I don't know. Well, they're all deformed, so it's hard to explain. Mm-hmm. Right? I could help you. There's uh, one that looks like a rhombus, like a diamond. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah. That one, that one I kind of, like, same as you, Ramon. I think I actually would pick the same one as you because I just think it looks so freaking colorful and beautiful and when the same battery trying to like slam yeah Yeah, starting to slam and destroy you but i i guess my favorite episode is the one that's like dance like you want to win i think that's the name of the episode where like um oscar and uh what's his name changey they have to like battle an angel and they have to be the on the same page about like their oh yes Mm -hmm. yes and i just i love that because i don't think you know before this this show, I don't think I ever saw that, and I think the whole idea of it is really cool. Like this idea that you just have to make the person that is your partner um, that, in order to yeah. defeat the angel. Isn't that because like the angel splits up in half? Exactly. And then it's split. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I remember. You have that to take one. both of them down, or else I guess the other one will just regenerate. See, and it's cool because they have a minute to do it, and as you're watching the show, it all goes down. Like if you're just on a, a timer. It all goes down in like that, that minute. So I just think mm. that's like a really cool episode. I think that's very Pacific Rim. So if you said that he might have had any influence from it, like that's like the whole synchronization of the two pilots to be able yeah. to like work together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, like that's, that's like definitely her. like I think my favorite. Not Angel, but Fight. I think that's for sure my my favorite. Fight. And then Raul and the other movies, they're all different. <laughs> all the angels what do you mean? are all the different. angels are different. They, they look they, they, different. Yeah, oh. they had some different ones, or like a, that's like, cool. The, like the one with like the paper rendered differently too. So yeah, like if you think the one with the paper arms kicks ass in the in the show, like in the movie, like they really make him like kick ass. <laughs> yeah, that one's also like really cool. This idea that like an angel with paper hands can just like kill, like can be the most destructive one. It's really cool. Yeah. yeah, even the first one though, I know that he doesn't like get a lot of love, but the first one always looks to me like the most Don't iconic. I feel like that's head, the most iconic one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's times where like I see the face and I forget where it's from, and then I'm like, oh yeah, Evangelion, a little like. I don't know, man. I hope that in in our lifetime we can definitely see a live action interpretation because I again I said it once and I'll say it again. It's gonna be Holly- hard if Hollywood wants to make money, and I strongly believe a good interpretation of Naruto could reach a billion dollars. The moment Naruto or any anime reaches a billion dollars, that's when we're gonna get all of them, like all of them, like they're all gonna come to the big screen. The good and the bad ones. <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man well my hero no academia, there, no. my hero academia there's there's a show right a live action show they're working on right is it really yeah i think that's that's one for sure <sighs> already announced so one that's that's another thing i was talking about too with uh my cousin that we were like discussing the the difference of like these animes like evangelion um Oh god. Guren Lagan and stuff where like they're kind of more of like the not the end of the humanity but sort of like you know it's like a grand post apocalyptic. Yeah, post apocalyptic. I mean like I think those are always been my favorite and then not note this on like my hero academia but that's kind of like where I'm stuck with my hero right now that it's like I'll stop and watch it because I want to watch something more like grander and I know it probably gets there but I'm still in the second season so they're still like doing tests and challenges and it's just like oh. I still so fight they're they're doing the 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 tests the exams or the not the competition. Ramon, the more they you finish. keep the more yeah. you keep watching it, you're gonna eventually like really grow to love it because now that you're watching X Men, you're gonna start oh, seeing yes. the influence that X Men oh, yeah. has on My Hero Academia because in My Hero Academia they kind of make you feel like oh all these people that are different are love and everybody respects them and everybody has their favorite hero. But the more you go into it, you're really gonna start seeing some of the racism that I think X Men can sort of reflects in the Ooh, not so for the this, racism, but not for the racism, <laughs> just this idea of like, yeah. hey, not everybody in that world is accepted when you really look at it because that's what X Men is. It's like as long as you're pretty, people will cheer for you. The but Morlocks. when you look like beasts, then you're kind of like screwed. The more I am blue monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Ramon, you, uh, Ro, you mentioned you cried during X Men. Any? I know you know. Oh, yeah, I would have been getting our final thoughts. Probably was. No final thoughts for me, but keep, keep watching everything there is to watch for Evangelion. And okay, yeah. I'll, we'll I'll watch it eventually. It. <laughs> no, yeah. but uh, with X Men, I could talk forever. But dude, like I, I grew up with X Men. Like that was my show. Like that that was my escape from 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 childhood. And yeah. then like I like if you would have asked me at any point in my life like what my favorite superhero was, uh, like I would have said X Men. 
I, and, and not just like one of them, but like the the concept of of X Men because like it, it had so many things. It, it had like family and all that stuff. And then uh, I I was watching it uh, uh, yesterday when it premiered, like yeah. it, 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 like in the morning. I was watching it and and, and just like. I don't know. It's just like the the, the nostalgia kind of came upon me, and then because like everyone's voices, well, m- most everyone's voices were the same, and then like y- you got cool Cyclops again, and, and oh you yeah, got, cool you got Gambit yeah. and Storm with the same voice. Yo, yo, the freaking move with Gambit and Wolverine, where freaking Gambit flares up his claws like that. Yeah, dude, dude. Oh, I've never the, seen that before. Or, or the, the fact that Cyclops was like pro- using his his oh. blast to project around and like move himself, it, yeah, kind of kind of like Bakugo. Uh, dude, I don't remember him doing that at all. Like in the past, it, I told Carlos that that yeah. was like the most impressive thing for me. I'm like, fuck, I love Cyclops now. Like, and I I never well, I mean, cared I always for did. him. Uh, he, I mean, okay. I never cared for him because he was like that class superstar but at the same time like seeing him and his abilities that's a whole different story man yeah. I, was, I was telling ramon that if you want to do cyclops in the live action like in the once marvel does the x-men live actions and you're looking for a captain america replacement like cyclops is the man man like yeah. cyclops is your captain america you don't need yes. to worry about like the shadow that chris evans left just focus on cyclops make him like the next you know potentially the next like, james marsden <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I think I see people uh, cast the guy from Top Gun. On, oh yeah, uh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, I've yeah. seen a lot of that. Yeah, I don't yeah, know I could see his that. name yet. I know he's in a movie with what's her face, a romantic movie that really did really well. Sweeney, something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but uh, the girl from uh, Madam Web from that's not Dakota Johnson. All right, well, I mean, we had our Evangelion talk. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be because I clearly still hear talking to you guys. Uh, but I will probably <laughs> turn my chair in after the recording and just kind of like go like this Start to crying. myself for a few Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I think for how, how diluted we kept it, I, I feel the same way too. I'm going to be like, oh, I just wanted to talk so much more, but I just can't. Not yet. I just got to go choke a bitch <sighs> first and then come back and then I want to talk about it some more. No, and this this sometimes look at a hospital bed. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm just (laughs) I'm just excited to read the paragraph somebody's gonna leave explaining things that we kind of talked about in the true meaning. And then if you could provide Uh, links to your to your uh, sources of the your sources, that would be great. (laughs) Your fan fiction. (laughs) (laughs) Educate for educate us and teach us more. And I'm like, educate us and teach us more, or give us your theories. Yeah. What yeah. theories? I mean, I don't know. There's just yeah. What's the rebuild? And your theories will be this. This is not definite. People can have interpretations of what happened. No, of no. Course. But watch, watch the rebuilds, and you sort of see like more, more stuff from for sure. No, Sato. I, ignorance is bliss. No. <laughs> not when All you're right. missing out. Okay, I'll watch it. Yeah. All right. With that, I'm I'm letting you guys go. But I right, man, we did it. Dios, guys. Talk to you see soon. You. Bye. Bye con Dios. Hehehe <laughs>